Hey, how's it going, guys? Welcome back to another PS5 video. So it looks like we now have the release of ETA Hen version 2.1 by Lightning Mods. So as you can see, we now have support for 7.xx firmwares, bringing the support all the way from 7.0 to 7.61. So all of those firmwares should now be supported in this official release of ETA Hen. Not only that, but it brings those firmwares up to the same level of support and compatibility as previous jailbreakable firmwares have had. So we're all kind of on the same page here on all of these different firmwares up to 7.61 now, which is fantastic. This release has also added a bunch of additional features and improvements. We're going to go over the main ones here in this video, but I'll also mention all of the other ones that have been added here at the end of the video. So let's go ahead and take a look at how to get this up and running on your console first of all. So if you're on firmware 6.0 to 7.61, you can load this using the Blu-ray drive version of the exploit. Simply burn Hammer 83's jar loader or one of the modified ones preferably that has the payloads included and burn that to a disc, to a Blu-ray disc, put that in your console and then from there you can go to the menu, to the disc menu here and select UMTX1 to run the kernel exploit. Once that has completed you can return to the menu and then load the ELF loader and then once that has loaded you can then close out of the disc player application and then on your computer use a payload injector like Netcat GUI to send the new ETA hen bin file to your console over the network using the PS5's IP address on port number 9021 and that will get ETA hen up and running on your system with a Blu-ray exploit. The other option of course is the Lua exploit on those firmwares where essentially you can run one of the games that has the modified save file to run the Lua loader. Once that's loaded you can then send the UMTX Lua file from your computer over the network to the console to execute it on the PS5 that will run the kernel exploit. Once that's done, you can then send the elf loader Lua file to get the elf loader running on the PS5, at which point again, you can then close out of the disc player and then simply send the ETA hen payload again from your computer using a payload injector, as we just showed with the Blu-ray exploit. And that will get ETA hen loaded on your system with the Lua exploit. And finally, of course, if you're on an older firmware like me, I'm on 4.03 right now, but of course, uh, you can do this on any firmware from 5.50 and lower. You can just head over to the web browser version of the exploit here, let it download the latest cache, which will include the new version of ETA Hen. Wait for the caching process to finish. And then once it says the site has been updated, we can hit options and reload the page. Cache is now up to date. You can then run the jailbreak. And then of course with UMTX2, it only takes a couple of seconds here with the web browser to spawn the elf loader. And then once we get this message to disappear, we can then run the ETA hen payload here, which has now been updated to version 2.1b. So we can just select it here and that will get the new version running on our console. Do you notice you get a lot less notifications popping up on screen when loading this compared to previous versions? But there we go. We now have ETA hen up and running. So if we head over to our settings, scroll down to our debug settings, you can see we have our ETA hen toolbox up and running here. And there's the final notification that's popped up version 2.1b by lightning mods is all up and running here so with all of this there's been a few changes so if we go into cheats work in progress there's now an option here to cache and reload the cheats list so this is basically for if you've already got like the cheats downloaded and then maybe you add an additional cheat through ftp or something like that then it doesn't actually get refreshed so instead of having to download and update the cheats you can just essentially reload the cheats list so any new cheats that you add will appear once you refresh so it's more of just like you know a way to refresh the cheats if you add any additional ones in without having to restart ETA hen or any of that kind of stuff so pretty handy option that has just been included in there for convenience so on top of that we have a few other options if we head into utilities we now have this beta pause case stuff option if you saw my earlier news update video where I showed the initial payload for this that allows you to pause case stuff. So this just includes this into ETA hen. So this makes a huge difference to performance. Loading times can be greatly improved. It can reduce things like frame drops and, you know, general performance issues that you're having with any of your PS4 fake packages or your PS5 game dumps can be greatly improved by using this option. So before starting the game, case stuff must be enabled. And when closing the game, case stuff must be enabled. But in between that time, when you're actually running the game, you can disable case stuff to get better performance. That is the general idea there. So let's go ahead and take a look at how this works here. So of course, if I go to run one of my games, I've got case stuff enabled. We'll run uh, CTR Nitro Fueled and we'll get this up and running. And there we go. So now that the game has loaded, I can then back out here to the home screen, head into our 
debug settings, go back to our utilities, and now we can disable case stuff. So if you pause after opening a game, be sure to resume before closing it. Okay, so just exactly what I said there before. So we go ahead and pause it there, go back onto the game. And because I've already loaded the game while case stuff was running, the game still works and it should run a lot faster and smoother uh, with, you know, shorter loading times now that case stuff is disabled. But if I want to then close this game and launch another game, I need to make sure that I then quickly head back over into our utilities section and then unpause case stuff. So re-enable case stuff. And then I should be able to close my game without it crashing or causing any issues. And then I can load other games and homebrew apps. And once they're loaded, I can also disable case stuff to get better performance. So I do recommend doing that. It may seem like a bit of a, you know, an annoyance to have to keep disabling it and re-enabling it again. But the performance gains that you get by disabling case stuff are definitely worth it in most cases. So I highly recommend using that option especially if you notice longer loading times or stutters or lag or any kind of issues with running your PS4 or PS5 fake packages, definitely try with case stuff disabled because it could fix a lot of those problems. So definitely recommended there. Uh, on top of that, PS5 debug, which was currently disabled in the previous version for 5.x firmwares, so that's now been re-enabled and working. So PS5 debug should now work within ETA Hen if you're on a 5.x firmware, whereas it was not previously. So that is another improvement there. Now, another hidden option that's been added in here is the ability to disable case stuff completely. So if you want to load ETA Hen on its own without case stuff whatsoever, now, why would you want to do this? Well, if you just want access to the plugins and the cheats, but without case stuff running at all, if you're just running retail games and you don't want the performance impact of case stuff at all, without having to pause and unpause it, you can disable case stuff completely by just putting a file on the root of a USB drive called no underscore K stuff uh, with no file extension or anything, and then plug that USB drive into your PS5. Then when you go to load ETA Hen, it will read that file from the USB and it will load without K stuff enabled. So whether you're just testing or you just don't like using K stuff and you just run retail games and you just want things like the cheats and plugins to work, then you can actually run ETA Hen without K stuff if you wish. But for most people, they'll be wanting case stuff running and you have the option to pause it and unpause it anyway. But the option is there if you want it. So another improvement is the time it takes to load the ETA Hen toolbox itself. So you have this option that was introduced in the last update, which allows you to disable the ETA Hen toolbox on startup if you just want the regular debug settings. When you're running ETA Hen instead of this custom toolbox menu, then you can disable this option. I believe it's also necessary for rest mode or to improve rest mode stability when recovering from rest mode when running ETA Hen to prevent it from crashing or shutting down when you recover from rest mode to continue running ETA Hen without having to reboot. Then having this option disabled is recommended for that. And of course, if you recover from rest mode with this option disabled, you lose access to the toolbox here, but you can re-enable it from items flow. The problem was it would take a really long time to re-enable the toolbox again. So if we go ahead and enter rest mode here and just do a little test, so we'll go and enter rest mode. Okay, so my system entered rest mode. I'm now recovering from rest mode here. As you can see there, we get ETA Hen coming out of rest mode, restarting all of the services. And this is the kind of the recommended way that you should do it is by disabling that option, which means now we're just back to the regular debug settings, but ETA Hen and case stuff and everything are still running here. So that is kind of what is recommended to allow rest mode to work. And in my case here, you can see it has worked just fine. But now we don't have access, of course, to uh, the toolbox. So if I want to get the toolbox back, I have to once again uh, go into items flow. So we'll go ahead and run items flow game manager. Okay, so once we're in items flow, we can hit the options button and then we can head down to ETA Hen toolbox options and inject slash re-add the toolbox. And this is the thing that took a really long time before in the previous version. It could take up to a minute, maybe longer than a minute in most cases in order for it to reload the toolbox. But this time here, let's see how long it takes. So it still says up to two minutes because this is the older version of uh, items flow, which... Uh, you know, still has the message saying it'll take two minutes. But as you can see, just a couple of seconds there. And then we can also, you know, re-enable toolbox auto start and we should be all good. So if we exit out of items flow right now and then head back over to settings, debug settings and boom, the toolbox is back. So it only takes a 
few seconds. Like, what was that? Two or three seconds? Okay, a bit longer. Maybe like five to ten seconds there to re-enable the toolbox. And it's now back up and running again after recovering from rest mode. And we didn't have to reload the whole jailbreak again. So using rest mode can definitely be a godsend instead of having to restart the console and reload the jailbreak. So a few other changes that have been made in this new version. We have added more in-depth errors to the direct package installer version 2. We have a few fixes for development kit consoles, as well as fixed K-Log auto starting even when it's disabled in the toolbox slash config. Removed creating unnecessary files when starting ETA Hen, which should slightly speed up start times. We also have updated PS5 debug to re-enable PS5 debug for 5.x firmwares. So if you're on 5.x firmwares, PS5 debug should work now. As well as adding a check to see if operations like downloading the store slash cheats or reloading the cheats cache is already in progress before starting a new operation. And of course the ability to disable K stuff by adding that file to the root of the USB drive can also be placed in the data slash ETA hen folder instead of a USB drive to disable K stuff when loading ETA hen. That's another option there. And finally, added back the package installer patches for 2.x, 3.x, and 4.x, which may have been disabled in some of the previous test builds that have been going around. So anyway, those are all of the main changes there that have been added in this version of ETA Hen. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video or found the information useful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. And once again, I'll hopefully see you guys in the next video.